All right, the team of fans. Hope everybody's doing well. This is the next to last week of episodes. So yeah, next week will be the final two episodes of season two. And we're going to have like a two week. Well, actually, no, I'm, they switched the dates. We, I think we have a. Wait, no, it's two weeks. It's two weeks. Nope, sorry, it's three, it's three, because Sisters got pushed back to the 18th instead of the 11th, so it's going to be as a team of next week, then like a three-week break period, which honestly, I'm okay with that. I, I need a break, you know, kind of to regroup, and hopefully by the time the shows come in October, um, my main channel will be remonetized. I'm still finishing up my appeal package I'm sending to YouTube, but that's neither here nor there. You didn't come for that, you came for the reviews. So I'm just going to do a brief, brief chat about both episodes 17 and 18, and then we're going to jump into energy shift. I think that these episodes weren't exactly 10 out of 10s, which doesn't mean they were bad. No, they were not bad. It's just that these were clearly set up episodes for what's to come next week. And unfortunately... Some of the scenes were quite repetitive. Now, for those of you who watch Tyler Perry's Bruh, and I know you're probably wondering, like, are probably thinking, damn, I haven't thought about that show and Lord knows when, and when is it coming back for season four? I don't know. I think I, I've heard October. I've heard 2024. I don't know. All I know is the show has new writers for season four, so I'm excited about that. But in any case... The last several episodes of season three, I really remember going, okay, they could have easily cut this season down several episodes because the last, what was it, the last three to four episodes was about Mike overdosing and being in the hospital. And for like three episodes, it was just the same repetitive scenes over and over. One thing Tyler Perry is going to do, he's going to milk a hot, a hospital set for all it's worth. We're going to see the same like three different locations in the hospital waiting room. We're going to see a hallway. The same characters are going to recite the same dialogue over and over and over. And Zach was kind of like a background factor in these episodes you know he had a couple of moments here or there but his thing was reacting to the news about his mom and then at some point just emotionally shutting down because he didn't care about the nonsense that people were trying to bring to him whether it was those who were trying to you know be positive or those who were blaming him for the situation mainly jeremiah but Overall, you know, there were there were there was more going on outside of the hospital. But um, episode 18, I will get to episode 18. But for episode 17, I'll give it a and eh, some uh, seven out of 10. I mean, that's technically by Zatima standards, a low score. But I think that in terms of a seven out of 10, that's a rather high score. I know the Fatima fans are going to be ready to drag me. I know on Twitter some fans are already going at me. I mean, even before it was 7.30 this morning. But honestly, I don't care. I call it like I freaking see it. And if you can't accept the truth, I don't know what to tell you. Okay, so let's jump into this. So, Fatima is in bed and she calls Paul to go, you know, well, actually talk. But then it's like, well, you know... I don't want you to think that I'm using you or whatever. And, you know, they kind of agreed to like going for like a jog. But he's like, no, I'm not big on jogging. And it's like, wait, but it's late at night. Well, that's why I want you to go. Oh, to be a bodyguard. I just need a man around so we can talk or whatever. So they decide to like, you know, go for, you know, either a walk. And Paul says he's going to load up his bike. And then they meet up in, um, you know, like a parky area on some swings. Um, so from there. We actually have Angela's side plot of the episode, which is trying to get her some. And Sam, who is Paul's friend from that double date at the club, he actually comes over and they go upstairs right before uh, Fatima heads out to meet with Paul. So they go to, you know, we see him on the swing set and, you know, they're just talking. Paul mentions to Fatima how he ran into Zach today out on the job, you know, on the construction site for one of the properties he might think about buying. And um, 
an interesting topic of conversation comes up and Paul mentions the exact same thing that he suggested to Fatima. It's like, so um, if Zach, you know, I don't know, apologized and showed you his heart, would you take him back? Well, no, Zach, all, well, Zach always shows me his heart. It's just that, you know, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to talk about Zach right now. And simply put this scene actually well shot. I did like the different angles and the lighting. That's a positive. But essentially, you know, Paul began to act like a man. You know, basically the fact that he couldn't stop making passes at Fatima. Um, you know, you know, whenever you call, I'm going to answer. It's just that I can't wait for you to be like, you know what, I want you now. And then it's like, Paul, no, I just need a friend right now. And look, the th I, I know I want to get flack for this. Because like I said, I'm getting flack already for mentioning this on Twitter. It's the fact that Fatima, one night, she's in bed with this guy. Yes, they didn't have sex, but still. Next thing you know, they're on the swings talking. And it's me. I mean, I don't, like I said, I don't feel bad for Paul at all. I think he's a trash person. You're going to go after a woman who is engaged. And, you know, you pretty much say, look, I don't care. Use me, use me. But then you switch it to go. Oh, well, you know, you're just using me. It's like, no, Paul, see, that's why I didn't want to call you because I didn't want you saying stuff like that. And I mean, yeah, you kind of are using him, but you're both self-aware to it. But the thing is, Fatima, and I'm not trying to like, you know, say, well, this is what you get. But you're confiding in a, sorry, I'm like rotating my chair around while I'm trying to figure out my words here. Basically, and this goes for men and women. I don't know. It, it goes back to the whole thing about, wow, can men and women be just friends? Mm, I think personally, yes. But I've always been one to think, I think, and this is just my opinion. I think guys and or men and women can just be friends, but it would not surprise me. I don't think it's, imp I don't think it's possible for neither party to ever think, hmm, can we be more than friends? I don't know if they'll actually act on that. They'll say it out loud. But I feel like, you know, it might be one of those situations where there's the moment where one or both parties think that, could we be something more? But of course, I know that, you know, once people get in relationships or especially when married, it's not all that common, I suppose, for a husband to have a lot of or, you know, like a close female gal pal, or, you know, the the wife to have a close male confidant, so to speak. Like I said, I, I, I don't, I'm not saying that's not something that happens, but when the man has made it clear that he wants to bang you, I don't think that you should act all surprised when he can't help himself from mentioning how badly he wants to bang you. It's kind of like, you know, Fatima being ignorantly bliss or, you know, blissfully ignorant about Paul's intentions, despite him making it clear. It's like, I get it. You say you just want to talk, but this guy definitely wants to, you know, do you. So it's kind of weird if you ask me. So it gets to the point where, you know, She's frustrated because, oh, Paul, you're so exhausting, but you always ask the right questions and you always have like the right thing to say. So it's like, well, Fatima, what the hell do you want? I don't know. But they end up just both going home. So going over to the hospital, the doctor, nice continuity. This was the same doctor from um, earlier in the season when um, Gladys had fallen down the stairs. Uh, she tells Zach about the situation that she overdosed on fentanyls. And essentially, we know that she got these from the money that she snatched out of Zach's hand. And it's not looking good. She may not regain consciousness. Jeremiah comes in high, of course, and he's blaming Zach, saying that, you know, oh, you know, you spend too much time with that little bitch of yours that you ain't got time before your family. And then he says, say what? And then he said, you know, the B word again. And then Zach ended up flipping him to the ground and started wailing on him until Connie got him to stop. And the funniest thing about this scene that had me going, okay, this is just weird editing cuts. When Connie and Zach get to the hospital, we see at least maybe four to six 
white people, you know, just in different parts of the waiting room. Then we see Zach and Jeremiah, you know, ar their argument starting. But then the moment we go to Zach flipping Jeremiah on the floor to beat on him, the waiting room is completely empty. On the one hand, I'm like, come on, really? But then the other part of me was like thinking to myself, well, you know, white people, as soon as they heard those black men getting loud, they just knew to split in between the scenes. <laughs> so by the time the camera panned over, they were already gone. So I thought that was like a weird observation. I'm like, okay. So in any case, uh, Connie's kind of like, the, you know, the referee getting there, getting them to calm down and have a seat. And um, then we go over to Belinda's place, who was just getting home, and she's mad at Nate for coming over. What? You told me to come over three hours ago, ne Negro. So they have a chat, and she's basically pissed at him for running his mouth in regards to blabbing about Belinda, you know, creating that fake Fatima profile on that dating site. But then Nathan pretty much is vouching. It's kind of funny because the same way that Fatima has been getting on Angela for being Team Zach all of a sudden... You got Belinda doing the same thing with Nate. And basically, Nathan sees now that Zach has changed the fact that Fatima brings out a different side of Zach. And Belinda needs to stop trying to commit, you know, sabotage their relationship. And he calls himself out, too. You know, he's self-aware now. But it's the fact that Belinda still hung up on Zach because of that one night stand. And that's why she's determined to do whatever it takes to, you know, bring him down. But... You know, Nate eventually convinces her to just stop. And I mean, Nate, of all people, being the voice of reason, kind of like with Deja in the lawsuit. When Nathan is the voice of reason, that's when you need to go, you know what? Maybe I'm the one that's tripping. And then they start going at it. Lucky damn Nathan. So, <laughs> speaking of people getting it on, we go over to Angela's house and Fatima is under the sheets. And I'm thinking, what's Fatima doing? But no, she actually has some headphones on because... Sam apparently got Angela in there name like she apparently they're on a horse ranch right now. <laughs> I don't know what that sounded like a horse or Scooby Doo. <laughs> uh, Ruby Snacks. I don't know what was going on in that room, but damn it. Hey. Fatima just the headphones won't cutting it. <laughs> she, the fact that she had the headphones on and she has her face, you know, probably just buried under a pillow underneath her sheets. And it sounded like a damn rodeo was going on in the next room. <laughs> Angela's something else. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, I'll get to her in episode 18. Don't worry. I got something to talk about when it comes to Angela. So then we go over to uh, the hospital again. Uh, you know, this was a scene that I really wish we got more depth on or, you know, more in depth with, but I'm Maybe we'll get more into it in the next two episodes next week. But I did find it interesting how um, you had Jeremiah saying something that sounded very familiar. The fact that, you know, you, you know, you don't care about us, nigga. It's like, you don't know what it's like when it comes to Ma. You know, when she fell down the stairs and everybody was pointing and laughing. You know how embarrassing that was for me? And that reminded me of how Zach felt embarrassed when Fatima was there at the hospital with him because of the situation that, her, you know, his mom had found herself in. So it's one of those things where they argue a lot, but they're honestly the same in a lot of ways, mainly because I know, I know it's bad to say, but mainly because of how their mother's actions are embarrassing. And that's an interesting perspective, but, you know, it's interesting to me that he just decides to leave and get high you know that's what he does but i'll pick up on that in a minute so going back over to angela's house fatima comes downstairs and um she sees sam naked at the refrigerator angela comes down as he goes back up the stairs and fatima decides that she's going over to zach's to talk and it's kind of interesting how she decides to go over to Zach's and talks after she talked with Paul. So it's like, what? Because you couldn't get in on with Paul. Now you decide to go back over to Zach's house. I'm just saying. But in any case, we go back over to the hospital. And Connie does have an interesting conversation with Zach. So first of all, she calls Tony to come over because, you know, hey, Zach and Jeremiah got into it. I'm trying to, you know, maintain the peace. But... When he comes out of that bathroom from getting high again, you know, Zach, 
is going to be another fight. So call Nathan, even though Tony's like, look, Nathan and Zach ain't really got, you know, they, they really ain't in a good place right now. But Connie's like, look, call him so y'all can come down. So Nathan's n lucky ass is in the middle of getting on with, uh, you know, Melinda. Phone ringing. Bang, 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 bang. Yo, come down to the hospital, man. Miss Gladys done overdose. Zach needs us. What? Cool. And I got to give props to Nate for, you know, like mid bang. He just starts putting his clothes back on. He's stronger than me because I ain't going to lie. Melinda and them lips. Whew. So Melinda decides I'm going too. And I don't know why she's going. I mean, she wants to be there for Zach, which it, it's sweet because I guess it comes down to her getting the eye-opening revelation from Nathan that, look, you need to let it go. So it's like, yeah, I need to be there for him. But remember, just because Belinda had a change of heart doesn't necessarily mean that Zach is going to instantly accept, oh, well, it's okay, everything you did to sabotage my relationship with Fatima, we're cool now. No, a lot of things have been said. A lot of things have been done between the two. So while the sentiment is sweet, Belinda, you didn't need to go down there. Stay on the couch. I'll come over. So we go over to Connie again, having yet another interesting, you know, perspective for Zach. Jeremiah is jealous of him due to the fact that, you know, Zach, as soon as he got out of jail, you know what? You got a job at the airport. You know, you made a come up. But that's interesting because I do feel like this. Um, I will give this episode props. As well as episode 18. If you didn't watch it already, watch the podcast or the season two, episode one, um, Keep It Positive, Sweetie with Tyler Perry, Hire is Waiting. And he and Crystal have a conversation about, you know, having a giving heart as well as, you know, feelings of potential guilt of when you make it and you feel like you need to bring up your family and everybody else up with you and how that could do more harm than good. So, and then you also have those people who feel like, you know, they have a chip on their shoulder because you've reached a higher level than what they think you deserve to reach. And then that honestly is a reflection of the Jeremiah Zach dynamic because Jeremiah is always saying, well, you know, you don't care about us, but it's like, well, like Zach has said countless times, you know, when he didn't have a damn thing, his family never reached out to him. So I guess one could wonder if, his mom and brother felt some kind of way about Zach because, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I see you got this little job at the airport and you make some money, but you can't help us out. That's probably the dynamic that went on there. And it's like, you know, Zach was barely making ends meet with that job, but regardless, he was doing better than his brother and mom. But it comes down to personal choices. I mean, Zach chose to, you know, get off his behind and work as opposed to just being a jailbird for the rest of his life or an addict. His mom and brother, on the other hand, not really. I mean, like he said, his mom is 51. You know, she needs to just stop doing this because she knows she probably can't take it. But then Connie makes a point to say, it's not your fault. I mean, she's at, she's 51. She's been doing this most of her life. So she's made the choice to keep doing it. So from there, um, Connie's like, look, I need to go because I got to get my kids ready for school in the morning. But, you know, um... I'll see what I can do, you know, come back here as soon as I can. So basically from there, um, Zach lets Connie take his car. I like, look, we left in such a rush. I need to go home. Or I didn't cut the alarms on at the house. Can you go over and take care of that? And then, you know, Connie will bring the car back when she's done. So from there, uh, Fatima is sitting outside of Zach's house in her car, not sure whether or not she wants to get out. And it looks like she's actually about to leave. But then she sees Deja pull up with a guy and the guy goes in the house and Fatima has her phone out recording Deja getting out the car all fine, which is interesting because damn near every other time we've seen Deja um, come and go from her car, she has like a neck brace on and she needs help getting out. But now Fatima has it on record that she's not injured at all. And she mentioned uh, to drop the lawsuit and Deja like, I'm not dropping that damn lawsuit. But then Fatima's like, fine, I'll just tell my cousin to come over here. Why well, I gotta bring Madam into this. So I guess this is post Sisters Season 5 when Fatima threatened Deja. Because at the time she didn't know that Madam was Fatima's cousin. 
But now that she knows that it's Madam, just by Fatima saying her cousin, this episode canonically takes place further down the timeline in Sister Season 5. Yeah, I'm not hurting my brain trying to think of that. So, um... Then we got the... This is why the episode gets kind of like a you know low score. Because here we go again with Fatima believing someone else over Zach. Or worse, even worse, not even having a conversation with Zach. Days you're like, oh, you worry about me? You need to worry about your man. Yeah, the way he being hugged up with his other woman and whatnot. You know, a girl with like braids and everything. And I got a picture. You know, she was just here. They were hugged up. And it's like, I got a picture you want to see? Yeah, let me see. I want to see. Yeah, I want to see. Because I know you be tripping. You be lying. But I bet you, as soon as she saw the photo, she would have been mad. But here's the thing, though. Before they really had a reaction to Fatima seeing the photos, Connie was coming out the front door. And then they stopped. And he's like, wait, is she wearing your blouse? And I'm like, no. How is she wearing her blouse when Connie was wearing the same? Ne never mind. And then the episode cut. So, yeah, honestly, this episode was kind of meh. It was good, but, you know, it wasn't anything groundbreaking. I mean, besides seeing Belinda taken in front of the back. But that's neither here nor there. Then Angela's name had me laughing. Something, just, it was crazy. Uh, we got some good, interesting um, perspective on how Zach's family sees him, mainly his brother. Um, but I, I know, like I said, I know I'm getting flack, but Fatima, like, you know what, you, you know what Paul wants. So, is it a good idea to keep a man like that at arm's length or arm's reach. It's like, you know, this man wants you, you know, you're attracted to him yet. He's the quote unquote friend zone guy that you're keeping in your back pocket in case you're not going back to Zach or you're uncertain about him. So it's like, that's a bad decision making in my opinion. Um, and then when it comes to Fatima yet again, it, it, it's like she's looking for some sort of emotional validation from everyone else around her, including the guy that wants to bang her, as opposed to just talking to Zach. I don't know. And then when she decides, oh, I'm going over there to talk with Zach, but then it's like, oh, well, the light isn't even on. I don't even think I should go over there. And then she decides to leave, but then sees Deja. And we know we were probably going to have a Angela showing, Car uh, showing the photo of Karen and Zach hugging at the salon blow up all over again now can you imagine if Fatima decided to go off and you know let's say you know after seeing the photo she goes over to the house and starts banging on the door for Zach to open up and you know wants to get into an argument with him keep in mind this is if he was wasn't at the hospital and it's like Fatima that was just a picture of them hugging you were in bed with Paul for a whole night give it a rest but let's talk about episode 18 in the next video. So what did you think about episode 17? Do you agree with my score of a 7 out of 10? Like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one.